uh, lean in with me today, if you will. We've had a really powerful couple of months here at Waterline. We kind of got into the fall, into our fall launch and everything, and we have just kind of see God doing some really, really cool things. Um, and uh, We've seen new families come to Waterline. We've seen new life as people have made decisions to follow Jesus for the first time. We've seen new life in people and families as, as we kind of went through our Alpha program and we, and we had some people who prayed to be filled with the Holy Spirit for the very first time and had these tangible experiences with the Lord where they, they totally began to change the way they think, the way they behave, and, and felt like the Holy Spirit and, and that God was just speaking more clearly and directly to them. And that's when we talk about bringing life or how having life. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about new life in Christ that changes our hearts, that changes the way we think. And we're leaning into that today as we talk a little more about a fresh start. And I'm really excited to see what God's going to do over these next six to eight weeks leading up to our birthday uh, in February as we consider allowing God to lean into our lives uh, and encourage us toward a fresh start. Would you say that with me? A fresh start. Over these next few weeks, we're going to allow the Lord to speak to us about becoming new, about becoming different in areas of our lives, of financing and parenting, uh, about prayer, our prayer lives, relationships, attitudes, and a few other things as God kind of lays it on our heart. Next week, we have a special guest, uh, just so you know. Uh, our district superintendent, Mark Gorvette, Dr. Mark Gorvette, is going to be here uh, in person sharing. He is uh, a good friend of him. He and his wife, Sherry, are good friends of mine, Elizabeth. He was the president of the university that Elizabeth and I used to serve at, um, and so we were good friends there. But he is also now the district superintendent over like 170 churches in Indiana, I think it is. Uh, and so he will be here. He kind of tries to get to uh, every church with with every two years or so. So he's going to be here next week. So I want to invite you to come back and hear what he has to say for us as well. I know that God has been doing some stuff uh, in you. Maybe God's done some stuff even recently in your life, but I want you to know that God is still the God of new beginnings. Isaiah 43, uh, 16 to 19, God said this to Israel, I am the Lord. Let's read this. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator and king. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with its, all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned their lives, snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. But forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. God is always up to something new. God says to Israel through the prophet, like, remember those most important times in your, mem- in, in your history when I took you out of captivity, when you kind of experienced those miracles of me like feeding you with manna that fell from the sky every morning, and I led you as a pillar of smoke and fire, and, 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 and I water came out of rock. Do you remember the times when, when, when I was so tangibly with you, and, and you still celebrate those through feasts year after year after year? God says, forget all that stuff. I'm about to eclipse all of it with something new. And of course, God was talking about sending his son, Jesus, to not only set Israel free from physical bondage, but the world free from the bondage of sin. And he was talking about the subsequent gift of the Holy Spirit, something new. God specializes in giving people fresh starts. Zechariah 10, verses 6 through 7, in the message, it says, I put muscle in the, in, into the people of Judah. I'll save the people of Joseph. I know their pain and will make them good as new. They'll get a fresh start as if nothing had ever happened. And why? Because I am their very own God. I will do what needs to be done for them. And Hosea 14, verses 4 through 7, he said, I will heal their waywardness. I will love them lavishly. My anger is played out. I will make a what? Fresh start with Israel. He'll burst into bloom, Israel, like a crocus in the spring. He will, uh, he'll put down deep oak tree roots. He'll become a forest of oaks. After a season of coldness and darkness, he says, Israel will blossom. And I think that many of us look back on these last few months and few years, and there have been some chilly days, 
some cold days, some dark days. Hear me as God says through me, you're about to blossom, that I'm about to do something new. There's a fresh start coming. God is a God of fresh start. Maybe you felt like giving up in Psalm 145, verse 14. God gives a hand to those who are down on their luck. He gives a fresh start to those who are ready to quit. God is a God of fresh starts. Even at the very beginning of, the, of Scripture, we, we see Adam and Eve, they, 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 they fall into sin and they disobey God. And, 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 and just even in the midst of his correcting Adam and Eve, he gives them a promise of redemption, a fresh start. Moses kills an Egyptian and flees for his life before any of the, uh, uh, of the exodus happens. And God gave him a fresh start and made him the leader of a nation of Israel. Joseph, after being slow, sold into slavery by his brothers and put into prison on false accusation, God says, hey, I'm going to give you a fresh start. And he becomes second in charge of all of Egypt. Saul, who hunted and killed Christians for a living for sport, for fun, burned them at the stake, got a fresh start, and became the gateway to the gospel to the entire world. Jesus gave a fresh start to the fishermen who became disciples, to the prostitute who became a follower of Jesus, to Lazarus who he called out from the grave, to Peter after his betrayal and denial in the midst of, of the crucifixion. Jesus gently restores him over breakfast with fish and gave him a fresh start. To those who are guilty in their trespasses and sin, Jesus says, not guilty. To those who are separated from God, Jesus says, be reconciled. To those of us who feel dead inside, Jesus says, let there be life. This is new life. It's a fresh start. It's what God has for all of us. When we have new life, we get a fresh identity, fresh peace, fresh comfort, strength, hope, help, promise. He gives us a fresh spirit, a fresh joy and glory and righteousness. He gives us fresh freedom from sin and fear and addiction and selfishness. He gives us fresh sight, a new way to look at things and confidence, fresh faith and a fresh future, a fresh home in heaven, a guarantee of eternity, fresh encouragement, new life. Oh, Jesus. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leopard's spots and melt the heart of stone. A while back, Elizabeth was preaching on joy, and she told you about a friend of ours named Merle. I don't know if you remember this or not. I think we have a picture of Merle here. This is Merle. He was crazy. He, Merle was a prayer partner of mine in a church that I pastored in about 15 years ago now. Um, and Moreau was one of those people who brought life wherever he was. He, he did sound. He, he was, uh, I remember we were hanging Christmas uh, lights up one time in this church, and it was a big sanctuary, like a, at least a two-story ceiling in it. And I'm um, holding the ladder for him, and we're talking, and I'm holding the ladder. And, and, uh, and, and, he, and he's like, bro, bro, uh, throw me up, throw me up a, a bulb. There's a, there's a bulb out here. And I look up and he's not there. And he had walked the truss all the way, like halfway across the, and he was on these metal trusses. He just was like, he just did life. I remember our daughter, Grace, like as soon as she got to the church, she took off her shoes, right? Because she was like three years old, two and three years old. And the first thing she shot for was Merle. It was the safest place in the church for her was to be with Merle. And, and like he did sound with her on his shoulders. I mean, no matter where he went, Grace was kind of his backpack. Like she was his little buddy. Like, like he just, he would just, he had so much life everywhere he went. He just brought life. And then all of a sudden, one day he and his wife were driving and, and they hit a moose and, and he was gone. 
gone like that. No, like, like it was like, why him of all people? Like he just, there was so much, there was, God just was doing so much through him in our community. And like, he just like, why him of all people? And I'll never forget. I, I was in a meeting with the funeral home director getting ready for Merle's funeral home, a fu- funeral. And, and uh, he was a, a friend of ours and mutual friend of Merle's he said, God, he said, Pastor Scott, he said, I've never been more aware of the power of God to change a man than with Merle. He said, I was, I was in the gym today, and he said, I was on the treadmill, and there was another person beside me, and, and the news report of Merle's death came up in the news, and they showed a picture of him. And the guy beside me said, oh, man, the world's a better place without that guy here. And... Uh, he said, you know, never, never knew a, a stronger womanizer or somebody who, who, who did more drugs or, or somebody who, who, who threatened more people in my whole life. Man, the, this city is, a better, is better off without Merle Masters in it. Not only is that just as cold, but, but to think about the kind of man Merle must have been before he knew Jesus that somebody would stand in a gym and make that kind of claim about this man who just was so full of life. And I realized yet again, this incredible truth that I have given my whole life to. God is a God of new beginnings, of fresh starts. And that a man that I only knew this side of Jesus could have been seen as somebody who brought so much death and destruction. It's just like not the same person. The spots of the leper was changed. In Jesus' day, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus. The Pharisees were kind of the best behaved group of people in all of Israel. They followed 613 commandments every day. So that means they memorized them and they kept them, right? 613 commandments they kept. And he was one of their leaders. Nicodemus had watched Jesus perform all these miracles. And most of the Pharisees were very, well, they'd rejected Jesus. And so I think as the Holy Spirit was kind of stirring him, making him curious, uh, the Holy Spirit drew him to Jesus. And so, just to be safe, Nicodemus goes at nightfall when none of his other Pharisee friends knew. He goes and sees Jesus, and they have this conversation recorded in the book of John, chapter 3. Jesus said, Rabbi, we all know that God has sent you to teach us your miraculous, uh, or your miracles, sorry, are signs and evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? Nicodemus said, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? They're pretty literal, these guys. Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water, which is baptism, and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. What I love about God is He's not trying to give us a better life or trying to help us improve on the lives we have. He truly gives us a new life. And God's not asking you to turn over a new leaf, but through Christ, inviting you to experience a new life. And it's not by your power. Like, I know this feels like, I can't do that. You know what? You're right. You can't do that. Many of us, including myself, have tried to do it on our own. It is not possible. Merle Masters could not have made himself the man he was before he died. Outside of the power of the Holy Spirit, it's not by your power, by your strength, or by your religious effort. 
You know, our religious behavior can make us nice, but Jesus makes us new. Yeah. Father, we ask that in your presence that your spirit would do a renewing work here. Everyone under the sound of my voice online or in this room, I pray. Now, I know a lot of you. You're facing significant trials. There's sickness in your families, brokenness in your families. Some of you are just taking it day by day. Some of you are quietly, really have had thoughts even over the holidays. Maybe life would just be better off without you in it. And you'd say, I need a fresh start. I need a fresh start. I need fresh faith in this situation. I need fresh strength in this struggle. I need fresh hope for the journey I'm on. Hear me loud and clear today. God wants to give you a fresh start. God wants to make you new. That's what we're here for. To celebrate and receive the life of Christ so that we can bring that life to others. Is that you today? Are you here today in the room or online and you'd say, I need a fresh sense of God's power and his presence. Or I, I need him to do what I can't do myself. Or I, I, need, I, need, I need his renewed goodness in my life right now. I need a fresh touch from him. I've, 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 I've had those experiences before and I'm just dry and tired and lonely. I need a fresh start. If that's you, would you just lift, raise your hands right now in the room in this moment of, just, just be honest and just say, yes, that, that's me. I just, I need a fresh start. My hand's up. I need a fresh start today. I need, I need God to be new today. If you're online, just, 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 just maybe verbally out loud, Lord, yes, that's me. God, I pray that your spirit would do a healing and a renewing work where we've lost faith and maybe got distracted looking at the circumstances instead of looking at you. Renew our faith. Where we're losing hope, I pray that you will renew our hope. God, in those relationships that are hurting or damaged or destroyed, I pray that you would do a work beyond what we can see. Even through the world, even though the world would say it's done, it's over, it's destroyed, God, we believe you can make all things new. Jesus, I pray especially today for those who need your presence your comfort, your goodness. We thank you for being here. And God, you are the one who makes all things new. I love the story of Nicodemus because you've got this like really moral guy who's, you know, who does like everything right. And he comes to Jesus and he says, hey man, like tell me the rules. Like tell me what I, tell me what I have to do. What do I need to know? Because this guy was doing everything right. He had a lot of li religious behavior. He was a nice guy. And Jesus said the same thing to him that he'd say to us. Hey, listen, like, it's cool that you're a good guy. But to really be a part of my kingdom, to be a part of the kingdom of God, to be a part of my family, you're not going to be able to work your way there or think your way there. What you need is new birth. What you need is to be spiritually born again. I think there are those of you who are here online or in the building and you recognize like, man, like I let myself down with my own behavior, little known God. And I know that I act in ways that aren't right. And the reality is all of us do because we've all fallen short. We all have this bent towards sin and we feel separated from God and we need a brand new start. Our sin separates us from God. And I believe with all my heart that this is why you're here today or why you're listening today online is to discover God is full of grace for you. He's full of compassion 
and his compassions are new every morning and you are about to not just become better, but because of Christ, the sinless son of God who died and rose again, you are going to become not better, but new. And if you're here today in the room or if you're joining us online and you recognize I do need his life, I need this fresh start because I am a sinner and I want to be born anew. I don't understand it all, but I want to be spiritually forgiven and transformed and made new by Christ today by faith. I want to give my life to him. If that's your prayer today, would you lift your hand right now? Would you lift your hand and just say, that's me. I want to be new in Christ today. and he will make you new. He will make you new. God desires that each and every one of us today has a new encounter with him. He wants to continue to fill you with his spirit and give you joy and peace and an ability to love like you've never loved before. Love. God demonstrated his own love to us that while we were still sinners, he sent Jesus to die for us so that we can receive this new life. And he gave us this incredible, Jesus kind of, just before he was crucified, he he instituted this meal we're about to take, communion. Anybody who desires to follow Jesus. This is, this is our opportunity. And, and, and Jesus instituted this before he died and rose again. And it's an opportunity for us to be made new again. We call communion this kind of religious word, the sacrament. What it means is that it's, it's something that we do that we don't totally understand how but there's a mystery of God's involvement that we can't quite explain. That he promises to be involved tangibly every time we do this. Baptism is a sacrament. When we're baptized in water, there's a mystery. We don't totally understand, but we know that, 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 there's a, that, that God is involved in our baptism. And, and, and we do that once in repentance, but then God gives us this kind of regular meal that we share together that he gets involved with in a miraculous way. And I want us today to have the opportunity to come to the table in the presence of the Lord today and experience a fresh start. Coming and partaking of communion It's kind of like responding to an altar call if you've ever been to a church service where they've asked you to come to the front. That's what this is. This is communion. It's an act of your will. It's an act of repentance. It's an act of realignment to God's will over our own. Communion is one way that we become new creations in the image of Christ as we partake. So I want you to consider whether you're joining us online and you've got elements there that you're using or you're here in the room, I want you to consider your participation in communion today. Recognizing that you're choosing to repent and renew your life with Jesus. So for those of you who are in right standing with God, or even today raised your hand to say that you're looking for new life, I welcome you to the table of the Lord today and invite you to take your elements. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took a cup. He said, this is my blood that was shed for the forgiveness of sin. And in the same manner, he took bread And he broke it. He said, this is my body that's broken for you. I want you to remember every time you participate in this meal, that you're saying again, yes. Yes to Jesus. Yes to his way. Yes to his will. Yes to being made new. Yes to a fresh start. 
And so today, as you participate in communion, I invite you to recognize this is a conscious decision of your will to say yes to God, yes to a fresh start, to partake of the bread with me today. of the cup. The core scripture of our Fresh Start series comes from 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone. New life has begun. Verse 17, he says, This means that anyone who what? Belongs to Christ. What they have become is a new person. The old is gone, and a new life, a new life. A weirdest thing, like. To not. <laughs> so we, we ordered Panera one day and I was like, well, I might as well, I can't taste anything, might as well eat something healthy, you know? So I got a salad. And literally, it was like just eating wet lettuce. Like, it was the weirdest thing. Like that. But new. The old is gone, and behold, everything has become new. Waterline, this is our fresh start. Would you bow your heads and pray with me, Lord? I thank you for those who raised their hands today. And I ask your Holy Spirit to come upon them even now, even stronger than you were in those moments. Solidify that commitment. I thank you that you continue, will leave with them from this room or from the place that they're watching and that you'll gently draw them moment by moment, day after day, closer to you, to your word, to your people, to become new. Father, thank you that you are the God of new beginnings, the God of changing the leopard's spots, the God who takes people who hunt down followers of you and makes them a gateway to the gospel. Thank you for Merle and his example of transformation. May each of us in this room also have the amazing opportunity to say, I once was, but now I'm Amen. I love you. I love you. I love you. Would you stand and just allow the Lord to minister to your heart as we sing this song together in response?